dive Mobile in. Legend. Welcome to game number two. And like I said, it's Taz on the Fanny. Wow. I told you. They swap roles. That is crazy. We've seen it from Aura. First time for Evos. Oh, man. Okay. I I'm just going to be... I'm just gonna tell you guys, Taz on the Fanny is a different beast, all right? He mm. may be the best Fanny I've seen, but he only played in the MDL, so we have to see how he performs here. Ooh. He's already coming in very aggressive from the start. He mm. has these, the same, festival level of blood, same emblem as Sully Boy in the first game, and he's already going in to the enemy jungle. Exactly, Sully Boy pathing to secure his purple buff. It is critical, but you already see Dreams making moves right here. Boom. Oh my god, Dreams is able to get that hook onto Selly Boy, really buying so much time for their own respective jungler. And this is the aggression that they need. They need to be able to inhibit Alter Ego Esports from snowballing, and that's exactly what is being reflected with Dreams on this Franco. I think the really scary part for US Legends is level 4 right later on. They have blazing duets, they can use the Chaos Order, they have the suppression coming in from the uh, from Franco. And if anyone gets locked down, Haz can just chop them up really quick. So Alter Ego, they have to play very safe in the early game. So it's a different game completely from game number one. Yeah, oh, Taz already going in for the Cutthroat, and there you go. That's the damage coming in, but he oh. misses the cable. Sally Boy is able to capitalize. The enhanced chain pops in, so Tujin now going to be targeted down in the mid lane. Sally Boy picking up all the plays, Woo. picking up a double kill for himself. Alter Ego, two kills in the first two minutes. Taz, a bit too confident. A little bit too confident. He's being capitalized by Alter Ego, and that is not exactly what you want to do. Especially giving someone like Sally Boy with the Killing Spree emblem all that. Oh, 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 I thought Dreams was able to get that hook. But right now, talking about Alter Ego Esports, with that in mind, they're able to set up for this next objective a little bit faster, maybe waiting on the rotations from Evil's Legends to ensue and look for a pickoff on the board. Wow, that was just so aggressive and it got punished really well. I think the movement from the members of Alter Ego was so good as well, you know, just dodging from the. Uh, the very last bit of the damage, and unfortunately for Taz, after a great showing so far, he got taken out, but right here he goes in, he goes for Pi, and he is still able to get out. Wow. Well, two misplays and two instantly capitalizing plays for Alter Ego. Pi getting out, and oh, Udo Udo almost, almost stole the gold buff away with the scythe there. Two times though, this is going to affect the confidence of Taz stepping up in this game. Ooh. Pai is just so good whenever he can actually assert his presence in the lane. And right now with Alter Ego, again, they like, they like burst, essentially. Evos has more burst than they do, but they have better AoE card control. So Dreams can pick someone off, but in an all-out brawl, I think Leo Murphy has a lot more impact to provide. Oh, Tyrus Revenge and the Rage. Oh, wow. Say goodbye to Dreams, and now Taz trying to deal the damage once again onto the rest of the members, but Silly Boy engages onto Sutsujin, picking up a killing spree for himself onto Pendragon, wow. dealing so much damage, and again, the bouncing ball, no, Taz! He's not gonna be able to run away, he doesn't even get Leo Murphy, it's a disaster! Taz forced to back away, Alter Ego still left untouched, four and zero, as they pick up the first neutral objective. 1,000 gold lead for Alter Ego right now, and gonna be a little bit more with that in mind. Mine. And now it is Evo's Legends once again on the back foot. It's so difficult to see. It's very difficult even understanding that even if Taz wants to go in and contest these neutral objectives, the fact that Leo Murphy is in the area is going to make it a little bit more difficult. Well, they also understand how to deal with a, with a Franco, right? Before the Franco grabs you, you jump onto him instead. He gets absolutely deleted. That was a great coordination from Alter Ego Esports. They get a turtle, but now they don't have the same tools they had earlier to try and demolish these turrets. So Evo's Legends, they're still able to defend for the most part the damage coming in towards their structures. Oh, turn apart memory there by Nino. Clover also used the Blazing Duet. No engage oh. just as of yet. Taz is in the bush though. Udil's gonna be there and Dreams finds the hook. The body oh, hunt as no. well. Udil taken down. Taz picking up the kill. Finally getting a kill on the board for Evo's Legends in the fourth minute of the game. Compensation by Dreams here being able to land that hook. And now what initially was a lead for the side of Alter Ego has dimin diminished a little bit more. And now Dreams already trying oh, to... Bu okay. <gasps> no, he got oh. it. I thought perhaps that Alter Ego stole that buff, but now we can take a look at the items. But before that, Sally Boy is going very aggressive here. 
He's just zoning the members away here. Leo Murphy also placed in a very good bouncing ball there to prevent Taunt from going in. Flicker is out. A very, very good objective take. And now we take a look at the items, Arashi. Half the C is already built for Taz, so already uh, a lot more burst damage available to him. Udo with a concentrated energy rush allows him to have a bit more sustain. And I, th I guess it's a good option considering his role isn't exactly an assassin. It's more of a DPS situation. For Nido though, Malefic Roar first item. Interesting indeed. You would think he would want to go for a bit more damage first before going for penetration, but you know, Nino probably knows what he's doing on the marksman. Yeah, you can see here that the next turtle has already spawned in the land of dawn. Already Nino rotating towards that mid side, realizing that he does have that pressure on the bottom side because the tower is down. Evo's Legends already opening up the map, looking for perhaps an end gauge onto Pi before taking out that turtle. And here we go. Dreams instantly with a bloody hunt flicker combo as he picks up the kill with the help of the Chaos Assault as well. Sally Boy, oh. he jumps in onto the wave. No more fall up for the side of Evo's Legends as he's able to clear out the waves. Alter Ego losing one member here right as the turtle spawns. That's a great pickup from Evo's Legends, knowing the exact moment to try and capitalize and make plays like that, using the flicker from Dreams as well. Leto gets taken by Sally Boy, and Leo Murphy engages onto Taz. Oh, no, oh, there you go. Tyrant's Revenge and the Raid instantly chained in with the enhanced chain. Pendragon taking low, still able to dodge away. Sally Boy going in for one more shot, finally gets the kill. Taz getting blocked by the bouncing ball. Alter Ego got another pick on the board. 1.5k gold lead, but no conversion onto objectives. Not yet though, they do have a man advantage. They are signaling that they want to go in towards that area, but actually, Selly Boy is rotating in a different scene as well. Pendragon already up again, a 5v5 situation if he can get there on time. And Alter Ego Esports now, they have opted to start, or maybe just bait Evo's Legends first. If they go for a full-on 5v5 fight, Alter Ego has more AoE to work with. Evo's Legends, they have to play on picks because the Blazing Duet on Clover will not nearly be enough just yet. They did send five men towards the Turtle though, so two members on Evo's Legends doing a lot of damage to that bottom side pirate, although Nino is already down there to defend that. Again, Alter Ego. Very interesting, right? This is the refined version of Alter Ego that a lot of people have been expecting. The fact that they don't just go for fights here in the game. They like to play it objectively too. If Evo's Legends aren't baited to the fight, they use that pressure to take objectives, to force them out. So far though, the damage dealt by Axe shows that Pendragon and Taz have done the most damage, but it's about who you target. Because if you deal that much damage to the frontliners, it doesn't really matter. Meanwhile, Sunny Boy he has a few kills on his hands, but only 14,000 damage dealt because he targets the squishy members. Hmm. That's a victim right here, but mid lane, boom! Speaking of, that's not a squishy member, but they made it look squishy. Taz jumps in now against three members, jumps in, gets the cutthroat. Oh Ooh. my goodness! Gets out as well. A 1-4-1, one, one. but Alter Ego are able to take the turret as well. So, Evo Legends still on the back foot. Alter Ego still with the better value on the trade. I mean, right now, Evo Legends is able to get a tower on the board. So it isn't as one-sided as game number one. They are putting up a fight as, oh, here we go, Taz onto Pi. And Pi feet. Oh, what? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pi. Pie. Pie. Consecration, sprint. You can dodge away from the cables all day. Happy feet by Pi. He is able to survive the pickoff attempt, but that shows again the skill of Taz on that Fanny. There's nothing to sneeze about. Alter Ego right now, they are finding opportunities. They have more control because the tower in the mid lane is no longer there. They can go for more aggressive dives, but they need to know where everyone else is. Ooh. Nice flicker by Dreams, getting out of the Tyrant's Raid. Such so has the flicker, doesn't have the Chaos Assault yet. Oof. Leo Murphy barely getting out of that range. Player gold by Ube S Gold, though. Nino on top, Clover falling very, very near with Sally Boy as well. But wait, Conceal play, Dreams doesn't have the flicker. He's looking for a hook, though, doesn't find it. Wow, now Alter Ego knows where they are. They are playing for that death bush in the middle lane. This is a common strategy we've seen, but Taz is going to be rotating around. He's abusing the mobility really, really well. And Alter Ego, I don't think they can actually get uh, the Lord without any contest, but in the bottom side, Sally Boy is already abusing that mobility as well, so there will be a pressure differential for both these teams later on. The battle of the split push between Sally Boy as well as Taz, as both of these members are on this very mobile oh, world. But Evo's Legends, even without, what? is able to get that Lord, and Sutsujin managed to get it under the nose of Alter Ego Esports. They're using uh, the DPS and technically the burst as well, coming in from Lunox and Clover. 
My god, that was such a sneaky steal. Sneaky take. And that's a brilliant one as well. Alter Ego did not expect it. No pressure on the map, but Evo's Legends, they beat the default play. And now it's time to take a look at the items. Well, Talk of Destiny and Genius 1 completed for Suitsujin. Lunox is a very good choice because it's a very bursty hero. Maybe it took his jungle playstyle, but Taz going in against two people, he doesn't care. That was so brave. That was so brave. Under turret, two members from inside of Alter Ego Esports there. No problem, as now they're actually able to push that bottom side from the side of Alter Ego mm -hmm. Esports. And now they're equal in terms of that tower. Three to three. I think the longer the game goes, it's going to be down to the execution. With that Lord, Evo's Legends were able to pick up multiple turrets. And so the control game now essentially is favoring Evo's Legends. But they only win, again, when Burst is involved. So if they can pull Alter Ego away from each other, they will have the advantage. Because if they all group together, I think the combo and the synergy coming from Alter Ego, it's nothing new, right? We've expected them to be very good in those team fights when they are able to line up their skills one after another and go for those combos. Right now, it's looking kind of... It's looking way better for Evo's Legends, actually. Yes, my goodness! Udil gets chunked there in the mid lane, right as we take a look at his uh, statistics here on the Julian. He's still on 100% win rate, but that might change as the game goes longer. Claude and Lunox, Clover and Sutsujin here. They're going to be very, very scary. With Evo's, the items. Yeah, Evo's is playing the macro game so much better here. E Alter Ego, they seem to be looking for combos, right? They seem to be sticking together, but that is exactly why Evo's Legends has the advantage. They can uh, afford to send people on their own to each individual lane. Alter Ego cannot do that due to the threat of being engaged on. But here comes Leo Murphy. Leo Murphy with the Tyrant's Revenge, only getting the tank. Dreams there. Now Todd jumping into the back lines, going even damage, and that is the combo. Wombo all the way. Todd just styling Ooh. on everybody as he keeps on dashing back and forth, buying the damage, taking the time for Sutsujin to pick up a triple kill. The calm before the storm. Evo's Legends. A 3 for one trade there for the side of Evo's Legends. They're picking up the pace. Only Pi what? is left to be able to clear those waves, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Remember, Sutsujin, when he's able to get those items, whenever he gets that power, spike already happening, you can see how much damage he's able to portray onto the members of Alter Ego Esports, instantly melting them away. Evo's legends have taken that economy lead back into their hands, leading to 1,000. And the problem now for Alter Ego is Lunox and obviously the Claude. Thirdly though, Leo Murphy needs to time the bouncing ball perfectly. If not, if he used it earlier, you see what Taz can do. That is insane. What even happened there? He, they just brute forced that fight away from Alter Ego and faced them at their own turf and came out on top. Pandragon right now has a lot of shields to work with. He is trying to zone, but the hook lands. Leo Murphy is able to get out of it. Uh, power Chain will knock Pandragon up, but Conceal Play happening from Evo's Legends yet again. Taz using the cable, zoning Alter Ego away. Pai jumping in once again. Sutsu Jin claims it. Sully Boy jumping over the Temple of the Blaze, getting the kill onto Dreams. One for one, a kill traded for a Lord. Evos walk away with another value trade. Yeah, they don't want to go on to anything more. They don't want to give anything to the side of Alter Ego Esports to exploit. And already, we are going to take a look at the instant replay here by the Samsung Galaxy A series. Oh, begin with the Bloody Hunt coming in from the Franco, but Suzuki, well, not Suzuki, has actually just goes around and around. And despite all the card control available to Alter Ego, they just weren't whoa, able whoa, whoa. to locate it good enough, and wow! What? What's going on? Nino what? out! Four people taken out. out! Alter Ego! They only have one member in the replay. That's all it took. Ten seconds for Evo's Legends to dish out the damage onto other members. It might be a one straight push here. Taz is looking for the base. He got the base turret down. Udil now in the midst of it all going in. His 100% win rate on Julian will fall. Evo's Legends equalize. It's one to one on the board. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps. It only 